Hello everyone, so today we are continuing with uh, the portions that we have to finish and today I am planning to work on uh, a poem uh, within this text, the readings on Kerala, which is the poem is titled Kuttipuram Bridge by Adashedi Govindan Nair. I am very sure that uh, at least some of you who have studied Malayalam in your schools would have heard, heard, you know, heard the name of Adashedi Govindan Nair and probably learned a couple of poems by him also. Now he is one of the most prominent poets, uh, modern poets in Malayalam and he has contributed much to the development of poetry in Kerala, especially a kind of a realistic movement in poetry is actually his contribution and uh, this particular poem, uh, Kutipuram Bridge is actually considered one of the earliest eco-critical poems uh, in the context of Kerala, eco-critical in the sense uh, poems which have been written from the perspective of nature or uh, in favor of nature. So this is considered one of the earliest works from Kerala uh, in that regard. Now he has made multiple contributions to uh, the scenario of Malayalam literature and he has also been an active member of the literary uh, scenario of Kerala and he has also worked as part of uh, different organizations which promote uh, literature and creative writing and there are multiple works of his which we probably have heard about now this is a really small poem which will give us a kind of an insight about uh, his take on uh, poetry and human life as such he has always uh, written intensively about the problems of humanity or the problems that are faced by humanity and this is also one among them and uh, Kutipuram Bridge actually is a poem which talks about a kind of shift that the poet observes, a shift from uh, very innocent and uh, humble village life to that of uh, you know urbanization or the cities or uh, uh, urban spaces, a kind of a transformation which he observes happening in Kerala. Now he is at the same time uh, quite impressed by the kind of progress that humanity is making through urbanization and uh, through the construction of uh, you know magnificent uh, uh, you know uh, buildings and uh, mechanical marvels but at the same time he is also very scared about the things which we might lose in this process now everything comes at a cost as we develop as we construct new things as we uh, build a new kind of urban civilization we are also losing many values and practices which were part of the uh, rustic life or uh, rural life or what we call as village life so he uh, thinks about his past when he was a child uh, the kind of experiences that he has had in his village now the title is about uh, Kuttipuram Bridge. At least some of you may have actually seen this bridge in person also. It is the bridge which is uh, built, which has been built across uh, uh, the uh, Nila River, which we call as Bharatapura in most of the places. So it's a, it might not be that big uh, a kind of a magnificent bridge for us now, but when it was built years back, this was actually a sight of marvel, uh, a very impressive sight for the people watching it because uh, they had never seen anything so big. And the mighty river Nela, one of the most powerful rivers which used to overflow uh, you know, uh, during the rains and all, which used to be uh, considered one of the most powerful forces of nature, was actually being tamed or controlled by humans by building a bridge which is standing so higher above this uh, river. So uh, the poet uh, in this uh, you know, prescript says that he was actually standing uh, on this bridge and it actually gave him a lot of thoughts about uh, you know this kind of a transformation which is happening and that is what he what what inspired him to write this kind of a poem I'll read the prescript I have known about the Kutipuram bridge ferry from my childhood when he was a child they used to take a ferry a ferry you must have heard a huge boat uh, in order to cross the river but uh, this poem uh, was born out of the mixed feelings I experienced when I crossed a bridge built uh, recently over this river so uh, when he's crossing the bridge uh, when his childhood he used to take the ferry now he is crossing the bridge it is a sign of development it is a sign of urbanization it is a sign of uh, a kind of a progress so, but he has mixed thoughts about this uh, without much ado, we'll uh, get into the poem. I'll read the poem and try to explain it in a simple manner. Upon the bridge built recently at a cost of 23 lakhs. 23 lakhs might not seem like a big amount to us, but probably back in those days it was a very humongous amount. I stand proud when I, I'm on this bridge which costs 23 lakhs. And I stand very proud. My eyes fixed on the dwindling perar below. So I look at the dwindling perar below. 
whereas dwindling it is actually slowly diminishing it is not as strong or as vibrant as it used to be it is slowly diminishing i'm looking at the river from top uh, and the river is actually blue this is the river on whose sandy shores i once played endless games of putang putang gol it must be a game that we used to play in the childhood so this is the place on the banks of which i used to play a lot of games when i was a child the river in whose cool waves i dipped for daily prayers so i used to swim and uh, bath in those before my daily prayers now i stand proud and tall now i'm above uh, the river level with the kingfisher the sparrow and the crane that flew once uh, over here so i am now standing at a level with the kingfisher birds the crane and the sparrows which when we were children we used to play they used to fly above us now we are standing at a level which is almost uh, like the birds so we have almost conquered the skies which were the playground of the birds earlier my eyes were fixed on the pair below uh, here is the river bank that would be washed away when the river was in spate so when the river was in anger or when it was overflowing this this same bank would actually be swept away would be completely swept away when the river would overflow probably during the rains when no boat would venture out or a kite dare fly across during those times during the difficult rains not even a single boat will dare to go on top of the river and uh, not just that even a kite would not dare to fly across the skies above the river oh nila you will swell again and inundate your banks so he is uh, you know addressing the river oh nila river you will once again fill up and probably uh, you know flood the banks at some point now you have actually you know uh, Uh, you know diminished and have become a kind of a stream used to be so powerful a river earlier but i can't help laughing at the thought of you crawling under the bridge now the mighty river which used to overflow and scare everybody is actually just crawling under the uh, bridge now doing a tame natta natta uh, there is a kind of a phrase called natta nuluga uh, in malayalam which says that if you lose a game you have to crawl between the legs of the winner the loser has to crawl between the legs of an atta nuluga that's the kind of a practice which used to exist earlier so the river is actually crawling beneath the bridge now a kind of an atta nulil as if the river has become a kind of a loser and yet i stand tall my foot firm so humans stand tall the constructions that we have made actually stand tall and uh, somehow we have overcome the powers of nature that is the indication which is there on this mammoth human achievement there wells up in my mind okay this is a very powerful very huge human achievement but even in the midst of this there wells up in my mind my mind is filled with a dull ache i cannot fathom a very painful feeling which i cannot understand which i cannot go into the depths of standing upon this bridge now truly the threshold of a new world now i am on this bridge which is actually an entrance into a new world of urbanization of industrialization of development of progress this bridge is a kind of a, a symbol of a, a of a kind of a new change i carries my mind the rustic vista that fades away day by day of charming gram lakshmi i fondly think about something that is fading away in this process the charming gram lakshmi the beauty of the village the simplicity or the innocence and the beauty of the village life which is uh, you know represented by gram lakshmi as i stand tall on this uh, symbol of human progress i actually also think about what we are losing or what is fading away it is actually the beauty of the village my playmate from uh, the day of my birth so this uh, village or the rural areas have been my playmates from the day of my birth now receding far far away it seems to be slowly uh, you know going away from me those experiences of the village somehow seem to be alienating away from me i am ready to bid final adieu they are about to say goodbye the wide expanse of paddy fields so those beautiful paddy fields those fields which were filled with paddy and the golden colored uh, you know uh, you know paddy fields when green and yellow playfully intermingle grows with her. so this is a kind of a description of the village beauty which the green and yellows intermingling with each other grows with houses you know houses which are covered with plants and trees and all flanked by fruit bearing trees almost uh, all the houses would have a lot of trees with with fruits and all 
the slopes covered with flowers of myriad hues every place will have you know different kinds of flowers the festivals in kavus the festivals in uh, you know kavu or temples marked by elegant lamps and the people tree the, the banyan trees and the people trees and the elegant lamps which would be there in the temples with a stone encircled base uh, kind of a you know a, a base which is made by stone the songs of the plowman during the day the farmer who would be working in the field they will sing those songs the, the memory of those songs comes to him uh, and the fearsome silence of the night and in the night there is there are no sounds of the vehicles or the machines or uh, there are you know uh, the sounds from the town nothing of that sort is there and uh, so ev- everywhere there would be silence in the village all these are moving slowly away yielding to stone everything is actually slowly moving away we are losing all these things yielding to stone all these things are giving up or being defeated by stone what does the stone mean because everything nowadays is actually built of bricks and cement and stone all these new buildings all these walls and constructions which are so all these village memories are actually giving up to uh, the constructions of stone soot cement steel raining over the flowers flowers have lost their lives to soot cement steel all these construction material howling and surging ahead now you can just hear the sound of the cities howling and surging then the sound of the tire and petrol day and night the vehicles passing by the sound of tire and the burning of petrol walls springing up everywhere construction springing up everywhere there are there are walls huge walls being built everywhere jostling for space left and right fighting for space in the midst of these towns everywhere the rough sky is raucous and it's the rough night too and even the the you know places full of you know some kind of uh, you know noise and brawls and fights and uh, you know somehow these conflicts between people everything is so disturbed for so uncomfortable the days and nights everywhere noise is quickening there are sounds uh, noises coming from everywhere the construction and the the, people, the conflicts between people strangers brawling locking horns strangers fighting with each other and you know coming into conflict with each other not actually strangers but neighbors even neighbors have become strangers because nobody wants to talk to each other nobody wants to spend uh, quality time with each other strangers are becoming neighbors and neighbors are becoming total strangers malur kayam which is probably a kind of a, a you know a deep part of the river which used to be there shall be a mere na- name from now on that malur kayam the depths of the river Uh, it is going to be non existent because the river itself has actually reduced brown in, down into a very small stream and the deity of mallur the uh, god of mallur by uh, but a wayside deity deity it will become a, a deity uh, a kind of a shrine which probably would be something that we see on the road side even this uh, andi mahakalan kunna which used to be a huge uh, you know uh, in a valley uh, you know during earlier times that stands in still grandeur which is even which even has a kind of a grandeur it will seem like a spinning top it will seem like a spinning top it will seem like a spinning top hurled by a hot headed child robot even when all these kinds of developments come when huge buildings and cities are made what will happen is that those huge values which used to be there even those will seem like uh, some toy which a child could play with uh, you know a child robot not a human child but rather a child robot it actually shows this fear that the poet has that everything will change into uh, you know a kind of a mechanical uh, sense of being all human qualities will somehow gradually fade away and everything will become mechanical and we all probably turn into robots without any emotions or without any nostalgia or without any kind of deep connections man is full of play tears and laughter humans are actually full of emotions fun tears laughter but if he turns into a machine you know if humans turn into machines oh mother perar oh mother the river or in general oh mother nature would you also turn into grieving reeking drain would you the river also turn into a a grieving a, a very uh, you know distressed reeking reeking in the sense filthy smelly kind of a drain a kind of a drainage as human beings change into very mechanical beings very emotionless beings almost turning into robots uh, in future 
nature mother nature will also become a uh, kind of a filthy uh, kind of a drainage like place even this river would become like a uh, filthy drainage that is the kind of apprehension that our poet has so this poem has been translated uh, from uh, malayalam to english by aj thomas who is also uh, a popular indian english uh, writer now everything which is written in malayalam of course could not have been translated precisely but this is definitely a very wonderful translation and uh, we do understand the depth of the emotion being communicated that is what i believe so it is about the kind of change or transformation which was happening and the poet is observing this change from villages to cities or from rural spaces to urban spaces the kind of urbanization and industrialization which is happening in kerala the poet is witnessing this and he is actually worried about this even though he is proud of these developments and the progress which human beings are ma- making he is scared that all those traditional values all those uh, scenic beauties all the uh, rustic landscapes or all those uh, human uh, emotions and connections that we had will be lost in this process of development it is that apprehension which is shared in this poem which is titled kutipuram bridge and uh, yeah you can think about it uh, now we stand years apart from when the poem was actually being written and what do you think have we actually changed in the way that uh, you know the poet actually envisaged have we uh, actually turned into uh, emotionless uh, or uh, mechanical beings or uh, do we still have hope it is a question that you can probably think about right so for the time being i'll conclude and uh, i'll probably deliver another lecture tomorrow so uh, let's conclude for the time being i'll see you tomorrow thank you